technologists, stakeholders, and Department of Energy Office of Environmental Management workers met for the EM Science of Safety Robotics Challenge. The Science of Safety means it actually doing our work smarter and, and safer. By infusing these technologies, we firmly believe that technologies can actually improve how we do work. DOE's Portsmouth Gaseous Diffusion Plant in Ohio was chosen as a test bed for the demonstration. The United Steel Workers see real value in embracing new technologies for the critical work that lies ahead. So it's about time that we start utilizing new technologies. Anything that we can do to augment the workforce, anything that we can do to have less time in the hazardous environments is, is all working towards the science of safety to make the workplace safer. We actually have three systems with us today. We have a large screen system behind me. Uh, that's great for large buildings, large pieces of equipment. We have a desktop system, which is very good for training on a smaller equipment. And finally, we're displaying some augmented reality, which is tablet-based right now. It can also be viewed on headset displays. I think that out of everything that I saw today, the virtual reality is gonna be great. It looks like something that we could really use. What we're brought here today is a simulation. One of the main things we're trying to do is to make it possible for the tasks which are really dangerous to try to get people away from them. It's still a very much a human controlled task, a human guided task, but the human doesn't have to be physically where the danger is. So in this unique technology, what we brought uh, to bear was robotics, which we're very comfortable with and that we do all the time. Data share, which is real-time um, data collection and distribution to uh, the people who need to see it. Machine learning to automatically analyze the uh, video data and identify uh, features in the pipes that the operators normally uh, identify manually. The purpose was to create a prosthetic limb that has all the capability of your natural hand. So what we learned through this was how to take very complex thoughts, you know, move, wiggle my fingers, and turn those into motion of a robotic limb so that somebody can operate that just like they would their natural limbs. Promoting worker safety, taking people out of harm's way, the USW is 100% behind. When you're running it, you forget that you're running a robot. You know, you've got this stuff on you, but you're clear across the room, and it's, you know, 20 feet away from your It's like you're right there. Our technology is a remote-operated platform that has three different cameras on it. We built this to be simple, so it could do multiple tasks. We use it for radiation protection. We also use it for contamination control. We do air sampling with it. And today we demonstrated gas detection. So our lab in general is very interested in high dimensional robotic systems. In particular here we've got snake robots that we're showing that are very good for pipe inspection and infrastructure inspection type tasks. So we have one snake and then we wanted to make a walking robot so we built a hexapod. We demonstrated that walking outside on rough terrain and on rubble for accessing hard to reach areas.
So we ran three basic demos today. One was a demo with what we call the boom copter, which is looking at opening and closing things like electrical cabinets for sealing them up for de decontamination. The other thing we looked at was the Dexter's hex rotor, which is a precision UAV for agile interaction with the physical environment for things like sampling and applying sealants. The final demo we had was a vertical takeoff and landing fixed wing hybrid. This is a, a vehicle that can fly long distances efficiently and still have the ability to hover in flight. Today we demonstrated a forklift automated navigation and safety system. So for the navigation system, we're using a downward facing camera, which is making a fingerprint of the ground surface. For the human detection portion, we are using a deep learning based algorithm, which identifies people by searching through a space in front of the vehicle. The demonstration showed how teams of small and lightweight surveillance robots utilizing wireless relays can get to hard-to-reach spaces in our nuclear facilities. They're so durable that they're throwable. The second demonstration showed how ground air robot teams enable workers to perform demanding visual tasks in hard-to-reach areas or to manipulate valves, sensors, and tools. So our first demo was using a standard kind of ADEPT Pioneer robot. It was outfitted with sensors to test for alpha or gamma, thermal or even gases, and it could work autonomously to test an area or inventory a space to make sure everything was where it was. Then we have a second system that's a dual arm system that allows you a lot more precision to actually move the sensors around or near walls. These are tools that my fellow Union brothers and sisters could use to do their jobs and it would take the strain off of their bodies. It's electric motor powered glove that provides grasp assistance to the user. Roughly 10 to 15 additional pounds of constant strain. We still have the ability to override or to adjust, so we never lose control of the glove. So it just helps with fatigue, uh, muscle spasms, gives me more of a break and allows me to do the job longer. The demonstration here was to inspect a cylinder they use the robot to go out and perform all aspects of the visual inspection. So I really got to compliment the union operators. They just embrace this robotic technology. We were able to do our cylinder inspections solely with this robot. We can do it from a safe area. And we also was getting cylinder swipes with it, which is another craft that's involved with our cylinder inspections. It also helps prevent from getting contamination. If there is a breach, this robot can go out there and get the swipe without putting personnel in harm's way. So here at Portsmouth, the United Steelworkers and our contractor, Flora BWXT Portsmouth, recognize the potential of robotic technologies to improve their work and actually execute their mission. Well, I think the big takeaway has been the feedback from the workers and the staff. They came up with more ideas. I'm sure the USW has ideas, the UEA has ideas, and then you bring people with technology ideas in, they're just going to have an overwhelming sense of knowledge when it comes to getting everything tied together. I think it's top priority. Without safe environment, you have no work, you have no workers. If we can't do it safely, we don't need to be doing it. 